Welcome back. Today we're going to focus in on one specific quantity of a wave called the wavelength. Now the wavelength is defined to be the horizontal distance between two corresponding points in the wave. For a water wave, we tend to measure from peak to peak, or perhaps from trough to trough, or valley to valley, as it's called. So this distance from here to here would be one wavelength. Or if we looked at the valleys from here to here, that would be one wavelength. And you can measure from a corresponding point in the middle of the wave. I call this the average, from average to average, if you'd like. But you have to make sure it's a corresponding point. Here is average on the downslope of a wave. This is average on the upslope. That's not the same point. Not until I come back down again and hit this average uh, do I find um, a full wavelength. And so those wavelengths are just lengths. Um, and so they would get measured with the standard units of either meters or feet, typically. And the symbol we use to represent that is a Greek letter. Um, looks like an upside down Y. Um, I call it lambda. And uh, I will draw, uh, in, if I want to draw that the way I think about it, is I'll draw an L with a kickstand. That's how I draw a lambda. So again, uh, the units for that would be in meters or feet. Uh, for some waves, uh, specifically light waves, um, the units, uh, these wavelengths are so small that uh, the numbers would be annoying to work with in meters. And so we measure things in nanometers, which is a billionth of a meter. Um, and a related unit to that uh, sometimes comes up, hasn't uh, in a long time, I don't think, but uh, an angstrom, uh, A with this little circle on top of it, is uh, 10 to the tenth, excuse me, 10 to the negative tenth meters. Um, so a little smaller than a nanometer. Again, those will come up when you're talking about light waves. In fact, uh, let's look at the, the electromagnetic spectrum as a whole. Um, these are all different types of waves, and yet all the same. They're all electromagnetic waves, which are disturbances between the electric field and the magnetic field when that gets transferred uh, through space. Um, that's called an electromagnetic wave. and uh, some of those waves, uh, you've recognized um, these, uh, the small section right in here, um, these all have a very small wavelength um, ranging anywhere from 400 nanometers, that is 400 billionths of a meter, to 700 billionths of a meter. Um, those are um, waves that our eyes are tuned to see, um, and that is in the um, we call that the, visual, the visible spectrum. Um, just smaller than that, uh, waves that are even smaller than that are called ultraviolet waves. Um, those are waves that our body can feel um, and usually get sunburned of some sort. Um, X-rays are smaller yet than that, and those are waves that, uh, waves that actually penetrate through our body, um, and so that's why they're used in medicine, to see the insides of us. Um, and gamma rays are things that uh, are even more powerful um, and dangerous. Uh, thankfully, we don't get hit by a ton of them uh, because our magnetic um, a magnetosphere, um, the magnetic field that surrounds our Earth, tends to protect us a lot from them. Uh, but we still get bombarded by them every once in a while. Um, and then smaller wavelengths um, are things like uh, heat, infrared rays, um, that uh, our eyes can't see, but our bodies feel as heat. And some goggles have been made that are tuned to this frequency. And so they will see heat and show it um, on a screen so that you can see it. Uh, microwaves, uh, microwave ovens, for instance, uh, produce that same sort of waves as a, a light wave. It's just uh, at a spectrum that our eyes can't pick up. Um, that tends to heat up um, water molecules and warm up our air. Radio waves. Um, are the same sort of thing. It's just uh, their wavelengths are relatively big. Um, and uh, even bigger than that are some of the earliest, earliest long radio waves uh, that have been used. Um, so light, specifically, as I mentioned, is uh, just a small section of that. Uh, that ranges from about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. So now. Uh, 
when we're dealing with wavelength, uh, one of the first things that uh, we'll look at is just uh, looking at a picture. What is a single wave and how can we calculate how long that is? Uh, and so these exercises are designed just to, to get you thinking about that a little bit. Um, overall, uh, an equation that uh, you can use that I hope you'll find to be relatively intuitive is that the total length of, a, of multiple waves, if you will, um, is equal to the number of waves um, in that section times its wavelength. So uh, here's uh, an example. It's got multiple waves in there. Um, I'm going to kind of identify all the valleys. So from here up and down again, that's one wave. And then there again is a second wavelength. Here's a third wavelength, a fourth wavelength, and a fifth wavelength. So five total wavelengths, that would be our n. The wavelength is what we're looking for, so that's a variable. I'll call that L with a kickstand. And the total length is given to us is 35 centimeters. And so you can calculate what lambda is simply by dividing. Lambda in this case would be 7 centimeters. The others here are relatively self-explanatory. Here's one that's a little strange. You go up one, there's one wave, two waves, three waves, but then I only go up and don't come back down again. So in this particular case, uh, I only have three and a half waves. So 54 would equal 3.5 times wavelength. And again, by division, you can figure out what lambda is. Um, here's a few other examples uh, that are not as complete. Um, some of the waves get cut off. I want to focus in on one in particular, this middle one here. If I go from here, I go up, there's one full wave. And up to middle, all the way up to the top, back down to middle, down to the bottom, there's two whole waves. I'm kind of cutting it off because uh, each of those represents one fourth of a wave. So up to the average is a fourth, that's two and a quarter. Here's two and a half waves, two and three quarters, three whole waves and back to the middle is another quarter of a wave after that. So this represents 3.25 waves times wavelength equals 41 centimeters. And uh, here's a few other examples, um, relatively straightforward. You could look at those if you want. Um, but then uh, lastly, uh, just a couple different types of waves. Here are, are two different uh, types of interpretations for this. One thing you could do is just say that this is a, a strange wave shape, it's not a perfect sine wave, it's this weird kind of bump. And so here's one wave and here's another wave. You could say that this is two waves, um, each with a wavelength of 1.3 meters. Another way of interpreting this problem though is to uh, see, well, maybe this is two waves that are superimposed on top of each other. Like uh, here's one wave, and then uh, here is another wave. And so this solid wave, there's one wavelength in 2.6 meters, so it would have a wavelength of 2.6. And this uh, other wave, which I drew in jagged, um, also has one wavelength in 2.6 meters. Um, and so you could say that uh, this is a wave, oops, wrong lambda, L with a backwards kickstand. Um, you could say that the solid one has a wavelength of 2.6. You could say that the jagged lambda is 2.6. Or you could also interpret the wave as being the whole thing. And then, since there are two of those, in 2.6 meters, uh, you could call that 1.3 meters. Both of those serve different purposes. And for some reasons, it's more helpful to split these up into two separate things and think of their bigger wavelength. Um, but many times it simplifies things to just consider it to be one wave with a smaller wavelength. We'll get into some of those more when we talk about interference in a few videos. So anyway, there's some thoughts about wavelength. Thanks for watching and tune back in next time as we talk about wave speed.